Hi, this is Todd Oltoff from ToddOltoff.com coming back at you with another screencast. In this week, we're going to take a look at OwnCloud again, and we're going to take a look at how to use external storage. Now, if you're looking at using OwnCloud to replace something like, let's say, Dropbox, uh, there are options to connect your OwnCloud instance to those external storage options. Now, you can use them to move files over into OwnCloud if you wanted to do that, or you could also use it as extra storage where those files are still going to be stored on Dropbox, but you'll be able to share them through your OwnCloud instance. So let me show you how that works. So what we're going to do is just come over here, and we're going to go to Settings. And we're going to let that load. And then in settings, we're just going to come right here to storage. And so now when I click on storage, I want to click this enable external storage button. And what I'll get is this drop down here that gives me some options for adding external storage. Uh, now there is uh, the ability you can see here to add uh, SMB mounts if you want to do that. Uh, in this case, right now with the Docker instance of OwnCloud, uh, there are some issues with getting those things to take. Uh, for adding that particular client. Uh, so what I'm going to do is just show you uh, generally some of the other storage options. If I just click on this, you'll see that I have access to Amazon S3, Google Drive, uh, OpenStack, uh, OwnCloud itself, uh, as well as SFTP and WebDAV. So if I've got any WebDAV instances running on my server, I could go ahead and add those. You know, For instance, uh, let me show you how that would work, and then I'll show you how to add other plugins. Okay, so here we are. You can see that I have added a uh, WebDAV um, external mount there. You can see I just left it named as WebDAV. You can call it whatever you want. Uh, you can see that's the external storage. Uh, you can choose to do uh, a username and password with authenticating with HTTPS if you have that set up. Or if it's just something you know on your local server internally, you can just use login credentials or save in session. Then you put in your actual address right here for the actual web dev server. And then if you have a particular subfolder you want to mount, you put that in here as well. If you've just got one, then you don't have to worry about it. Here you can determine uh, which users have access. And you can see all of my different groups will pop down here. And I can give access only to specific users or to anybody. I'm just going to leave it open for anybody. And then over here, you can see in the settings, I can enable previews. I can enable sharing where they can share things from within there. And uh, then I can choose, uh, you know, when I'm going to check either never or once every direct access. And then it says compatibility with Mac NFD encoding, uh, which in our case I don't have to worry about, so I'm just going to leave that alone. I can always delete the share by hitting the uh, garbage can over here, which is delete. Now you'll notice that I've got this green dot, which means that it has made contact so that that is all set up and ready to go. Uh, if you get a red square, that means it's not able to contact or get connected, and so you're going to have to figure out something's wrong with your configuration. Now, down here, I can just click on this to allow users to mount uh, the external storage, and I can choose which ones they're allowed to mount depending on what I have. And then I can also allow them to share uh, on those external uh, storage as well, where they can share items from that external storage to other users who uh, might not be connected. So I can enable that access as well. So now once I've enabled all of that uh, access and all of that, if I just uh, real quick come up here to storage for the personal user, you can see that the web dev storage does show here. So the, my different stores will show here for my users when they go into their personal area, they'll be able to see that. So now let's go ahead and go back to our files area here and we should see that web dev uh, folder. There it is, it shows up right here. And if I just go ahead and click into it, you can see now I've got access to the files that are on that particular web dev server. So again, it's a nice way to be able to share files from, let's say, folders you might actually have on your server on your Mac Mini uh, or whatever computer you're using. Or it will also, uh, it's also good for remote uh, servers that are using web dev as well. Okay, now that we have WebDAV all set and ready to go on OwnCloud, let me just show you what this looks like. So on my Mac here, I've got uh, this picture of an Apple Mac. And what I'm going to do is move it into the folder that I have here for WebDAV. So I'm just going to grab this and we'll highlight this. And this is the same folder. You can see that file is up there in OwnCloud. So I'm just going to go ahead and add this in here so that that file is now in that WebDAV folder. Okay, so now you can see we've got this Apple Mac picture here. So what we need to do is we'll just go back into OwnCloud here and we'll go out of this particular area. Let's go back home here for a minute so that it refreshes. 
you can see I've got uh, this set right here. And so what should happen is that should hopefully sync there for us. You can see it's been modified a while ago. Uh, so it's not quite showing that yet. You can see we can look at details uh, of the particular uh, file here and, and all of that and get that information. And you can see here that uh, it's a private link. So let's go ahead and go into this folder and let's see if we can get that to show up. And sure enough, there it is. There's my picture of the Mac right there. And if I just click on it, you can see that I can download the particular file. And here it is popped right up on my desktop. So uh, as you can see, that's a great way to replace WebDAV. If you've got WebDAV uh, on, your, on your Mac, you've got ways you want to share files with own cloud. Using WebDAV is a good way of doing that. You just create that WebDAV folder, and then that'll be in sync with all of your devices, as I show you later when we uh, take a look at how to connect your Macs and your iOS devices to your own cloud instance. You'll be able to see how you can just use that to share files and stuff from your Mac right to own cloud. So hopefully that helps you get all that set up. So that's all I have for this week. I'll be back at you next week with another screencast to help you learn how to do more things with your Mac. If you're interested in help in setting up your own server, feel free to contact me at todd at toddoltoff.com.